Hi, it's Professor Murphy. Welcome to the database portion of Information Technology. We save the best modules for last. Technology changes at an order of magnitude. A lot is happening every day to change and hopefully improve our lives. You are watching this video on some device, maybe your phone, iPad, computer. I used a variety of technology to create this video. I am sure many of you have Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and a variety of other accounts where you share data in the form of posts, photos, and personal information. So I am also certain you have heard how important it is to safeguard this data and also heard about breaches in security that has resulted in personal information being shared with unauthorized people and may be used and combined in ways that have unintended consequences. You will learn more about these issues in the subsequent courses in the IT program. But at a basic level, you have heard the word data, know that it is stored somewhere, and that you and others are able to retrieve this data when you need it. In order to understand an individual or an organization's need to store and retrieve data, it is important to take a step back and look at how we got here. So let's talk about data. The word is thrown about and often used when we really mean information. Data is raw, unorganized facts, figures, or representations. Data doesn't really mean much. When you organize the data so that it means something to someone, it is information. Take a book. You can read a book and know something that you did not know before you read that book, right? But what if we took all the letters from that book and scattered them on the floor? Would you still know something? Could you pick up the letters and read them one by one and know something? Not likely. You could take those letters and put them together and tell a story, but it is likely, in fact, very, very likely that it would not be the same story as the original book. Data is like the letters. Information is the book. So what about knowledge? Well, knowledge is what you acquire over time through your experiences. It is the reason you might grab an umbrella if the sky looks gray, because you have learned that gray skies can precede rain and rain can get you wet. This leads to our real discussion. What is a database? Why do we need them? How do we build them? If you looked up a definition of a database, you would get a variety of somewhat correct definitions. But really, it's very simple. A database is a collection of organized data, usually for a specific reason. Sounds like information, yes? The key is that you want to be able to get to it or retrieve it later. So a paper phone book is really a database. It is a collection of data organized by name. It is a, has a specific purpose. And when you need a phone number, you let your fingers do the walking. Many of you may not know that is a reference to a long ago advertisement for paper phone books. Though today we refer to a database, we are really saying a computerized database. We did not always have computers, but there has always been a need for database because it's part of our nature to want to remember. So what about a hundred years or so ago? Did we have more data today? Did the organizations need more or less information to be competitive? Well, it's kind of a trick question. I could argue there is not more data today. We have more people and more history, but data has not exploded out of proportion to people or history. But the way that we record, store, organize, and retrieve data has changed. It is more, is it more or less important to an organization? I, I don't think so. Companies have always had a need to keep track of their customers, employees, and other records, and also to understand their competition and the driving forces in their environment. The challenges though are different today. We have easier access to data and information. We can probably find much more about our competition through Google searches but that does not mean we necessarily automatically have an advantage. We have more tools such as computers, devices, but do we know how to use them properly? Do we update? As technology changes, do we have the money to keep up? 
Certain technologies have drastically changed our ability to access, store, and retrieve information. The internet is the single most important technology that completely changed how we work, live, and interact. But also, the cost of storage and the speed at which we can access and retrieve from this storage has dramatically changed. And more importantly, the cost of storage has gone down and speed of computing has increased. My first home computer had 50 megabytes of hard drive, and I was super excited because my work computer only had 25 megabytes. Surprisingly though, I paid close to $1,000 for that computer. I use both Mac and PC, and I most recently bought a Dell PC laptop, an i7 core processor, 16 gigabytes of memory, and one terabyte hard drive for $899, close to the same price, but an order of magnitude change. The combination of easier access through the internet and the ability to store massive amounts of data for a very low cost is a glut of information. And all of you know this because you have done a Google search. Other technologies have also changed. Initially, man recorded using rocks. This led to paper and pencil. But eventually, we put away the paper and the paper files and use faster and faster, larger capacity drives. I do not know where it will end because I did not imagine, even as I gave this same lecture 15 years ago, as I stored or as I stored on my 25 gigabyte drive and taught about massive data warehouses that had terabytes of storage, that I would own a terabyte flash drive. I couldn't imagine it. What do you imagine is the biggest problem with having large capacity storage? Think about having a massively large closet and the ability to fill it with tons of clothes and shoes and belts. Do you see any challenge to having a small closet with say five pairs of pants, 10 shirts, and three pairs of shoes versus a closet that has 200 suits, 400 shirts, and 300 pairs of shoes? It would have to be organized well and you would have to have the ability to find what you want really, really quickly, right? It's the same challenge with databases. As a result, databases evolve to meet these challenges. Let's take a doctor's office for an example. The doctor had to write down information about the patients and to keep the patient's information separate, the doctor puts names at the top of the paper. And then over time, there are so many papers with the same names, so to keep them separate, they have a separate file. And as time goes by, the file gets bigger and bigger. Paper files are fragile. The paper over time can fade, paper can get lost, files get misplaced, and it becomes more difficult to find what you need. Computers help to solve some of these problems. Initially, each computer program used its own set of data, so the more computer programs a company had, the more sets of data. This process is not efficient because there is duplication of the same information and that can lead to inconsistencies. For instance, a bank could have a different program for car loans, home loans, savings account, and safe deposit boxes. But a customer could have several of these accounts. So what happens if they move, change their address, or change their name? And it does not get changed in every program. The need to address this issue led to computerized databases. The data could be in one place and the computer programs access the centralized data. Now, a change in the data only has to be made in the database. Additionally, changes in the computer programs do not affect the data. But the data in the database has to be well organized in order to get what we want when we need it. This need has led to different data models for organizing data. To some extent, all of these models are used today, but the one model that persists and is most prevalent is the relational model, and thus is the focus of our database management discussion. In your assignment, you will work in groups to develop a timeline of significant events or technology advancements that have affected the evolution of databases. 
The purpose of this assignment is that as future technology workers, it is important to understand the past and the speed of change in order to adequately participate and adapt to future changes.